The Lord decides shepherd I shall not want him because I lie down in a green pasture. Him lead that I beside still water them. Him restore that I soul. Him lead that I in the part of I trust that him name sake. Yay! Though I rasta, I will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I can't fear no evil. For thy rod and thy staff them comforted I and I. Who will prepare the table before I? In the presence of our enemy, them. Who will anointed I head with Uno oil? Me cup run it over. Surely, goodness and mercy. I go follow I all the days of I, I been. Me I go dwell in the house of the Lord God. Ja! Kalamawe, Grubabi, Ate, La, E. Exact beer. Tana Istalin, Abba, Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Kalamawe, Grubabi, Ate, La, E. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous run into it and they safe. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but Ja! Grubabi, Kalamawe, Grubabi. I and I give thanks and I say unto your name. This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushunamo, where we speak truth to power. In every traditional African home, there's a black pot, and every time it rests on the fire, there is certainly something, some shows cooking. Today, we are going to serve you a very delicious meal. Come along. We pray for the power of the Almighty to take over our bodies, minds, and souls so we can cut and go through. Hear me now, my brother, my sister. Hey, we normally don't like to criticize, but if we must criticize, we would only criticize to build and not to destroy. Oh, gosh. Today I want to look at the very first issue and this is what I call the Unkaranza Executions. Unkaranza is a very beautiful town right there in the Bono Ahafo region of old. Hey, it's a beautiful place. You can find a lot of plantains there to enjoy and it has greens. There's a special herb that I love and it's only in Unkaranza that I can find that and that is Dunsinkro. Those who know that herb, you know what it's used for. I love it. Hey! But the serenity of Unkuranza, the beauty of Unkuranza, broken down all because of police brutality, shootings, and alleged executions. My brother, my sister, Albert Donko was a native of Unkuranza. Very handsome young man. Watch him. Nice muscles. Now, he was taken by the police, according to his family, to help in the so-called investigations of some armed robbery cases. And when he got there, according to the family, ha, the following day, he was nowhere to be found. They said they had transferred him to another uh, place, you know, another police station in Techiman. News came out finally that the boy had lost his life. Under what circumstances? The police said, oh, you know what? This guy was involved in some armed robbery. And then when we went to apprehend the armed robbers, there was a crossfire. They exchanged fire with us. We shot. They also shot. And then our bullets caught him and he died. The family cannot understand. How can a man leave the police station and go on an armed robbery spree? What truly was the problem? Why was there a problem at all? I'm robbery. Lord God have mercy. Ha ya 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 ya. Hear me now, brethren. It is an interesting thing, and I need all of us to look at this very carefully. The sister and the mother have said something which I want to share with you, my brother. The sister said, The truth about the whole thing is this Albert Donko traveled to a town near Nkuranza. And on his way back in the night, some armed robbers stopped the vehicle in which he was traveling. And what happened? Robbed everybody on the vehicle dry. 
But Albert was able to identify some two policemen who were part of the armed robbers. Now, Albert decided not to keep quiet. He went out and was drinking with his friends at the rooftop. There inside Unkoranza, he told his friends that, Hey, yesterday I was robbed. Some armed robbers, and you'll be shocked that two policemen were involved. This person and that person. Oh my God. See what happened now? The news got to the police people. And then they said, if we don't silence this guy, he is going to finish us. So they followed up, went to his house, picked him up, and said they were trying to investigate some armed robbery. And boom, when they took him to the police station, and the mother came to see him, went back home, they took him to the bush, shot and killed him. And lied that there was a crossfire between the police and armed robbers, and some of the bullets caught Albert Donko and he died. Ah. The youth of the area said they would not understand. They marched all the way to the Unkoranza police station. And when they got there, hey, look at the fire blazing. They started burning tires and making noise and singing war songs. The police came out, -ta 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 -ta, injured nine people. Killed one person and three in very critical conditions. Oh gosh. Hear me now. Now the regional minister or the MP of the area. That's him. Mm. The regional custodian of the area. The constitutional custodian. That's the same. We call him the MP. Hey, my brother, my sister, the member of parliament of the area said, he doesn't know who ordered the shoot to kill. Watch it. That's what he said. Unkuranza clash. I don't know who ordered the police to shoot and kill. That's regional minister talking. Hallelujah. So regional minister does not know. The MP of the area does not know. The chiefs of the area do not know who ordered the shoot to kill. My brother, my sister, is the police going haywire? Now, can policemen be part of armed robberies? You all remember the bullion van attacks that happened right here in Accra. Oh my God, have mercy. Some policemen were involved. Yes, a policeman was shot. And then two policemen were accused of uh, the bullion van attacks and armed robberies. Now, these same two policemen were carried all the way to the so-called hideout of the gang by the police. The police themselves were bulletproof. But the two accused policemen were sent there without bulletproof. And according to the Ghana police, when they arrived at the gang's hideout, there was a crossfire and only the two policemen died. Now, deep throat sources say, that the two policemen were going to mention the names of the big men in the Ghana police service who they have been doing the robberies with. And they knew that if this news had come out, it would have been so disastrous. So just like in the case of Albert, these ones had to go so that the names of these criminal police officers would be concealed. My brother, is the Ghana police becoming a cult? Or is it becoming unbecoming? Hey, my brother, my sister. So many people will tell you that the police is supposed to be your friend. And that when you are at the police station, you should consider yourself safe. Watch this. On Kuranza shooting, when you meet police officer with a gun, thank him and go away. And this is Dr. Ochre Ankara. To Ghanaians, who is Dr. Ochre Ankara? Look at him. Dr. Benjamin Ochre Ankara is, uh, look at it, a governance lecturer at the Central University. Oh my God, that's what he's saying. But not in these days. When you meet the police and he has a gun, he's ready to take bribe from you. When you meet the police with a gun, he might even be an armed robber. My brother, my sister, Albert Donko is gone. Who ordered the police to shoot and kill? Kwesi Edu Jan is the regional minister. He says he doesn't know. The MP doesn't know. 
So who knows? Maybe we have to ask Akroboto. He will be able to tell us who knows. Mm -mm -mm. This is the Blackpot, aka Kuku Shonemo, where we speak truth to power. And my name, Black Rasta. Next thing we need to look at is also very interesting. And I need us to look at it dispassionately. It's called the Ejapa Reloaded. Ejapa is good father. Ejapa, it means good father. But in Ejapa, we also have a bad father. In Ghana, nobody wants to hear about Ejapa. Ejapa was a kind of a fraudulent criminal deal that the government in power, led by the Lilliputian, pot-bellied, fly-happy president, sleepy president, Mr. Sleepy Dent, turned traitor Dent, my brother, my sister, they brought this to the parliament and it was kicked out. But the opposition and then the incumbent are in bed. My brother, my sister, they are in bed and they are strangulating the citizens of this country. So the citizens don't even trust them anymore. Whoever knew E Levy will be passed in a hung parliament. Today, my brother, my sister, E Levy is dragging all of us to the slaughterhouse. Now they are bringing Ejapa. Now we thought that they said E Levy was going to solve the problems. Why Ejapa? What is Ejapa? Ejapa is simple. Watch. Hey. This is the finance minister. He says, a Japa deal revived. We mustn't drop it. You know when it came to the parliament the first time, they dropped it. Why did they drop it? Because it was terrible. And this time, it is even more terrible. You know why? Now to cut it short and to make it easy for us all to comprehend. A Japa is a government's deal, proposed deal, that is supposed to give all the minds in Ghana. Eh? When we talk about mines, we are talking about gold, bauxite, we are talking about all the minerals, all the mines, eh, 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 eh. all the mines, hey, to some people who can pay us some money. Now, if we are able to get that money, then we will give the mines we have now and future mines. So, in 10 years, if we discover a mine in Unkuranza that has trillions of uh, 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 whatever it could be diamonds tons of diamonds tons of what eh, is all sold out so this government has the arrogance and the audacity to sell the future of this country out to the highest bidder that's what it means they are selling the mines we have now and the mines that we will discover in the future to people my brother my sister let me walk you through something interesting. How much money do they want? They claim they want 500 million American dollars. If anybody can pay them 500 million American dollars, they will give the mines in Ghana, all the mines in Ghana, and all the mines that will come up again in the future, 100 years from now, 200 years from now, any other mines that will come out, they will, they will, the person will take that, or that entity will take that, if they can only pay 500,000 up front. And every month, they are supposed to get some money from that. How much are they expecting? Annually, they are supposed to get some other money. How much? 300 million. After getting the 500 million, every year, these people who are buying, the birthright of Ghana in terms of our minerals would have to give us 300 million every year. Do you understand that? So 500 million up front. We sign the contract. We take over all the mines in Ghana and everywhere that will come up again even in the future. And every year we give you 300 million dollars. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Here another interesting thing. How much do we make from our mines in Ghana every year as it stands right now? How much? We make 1.7 billion American dollars every year. Did you hear that? Government wants 500 million American dollars up front. And every year, they get 
300 million on top. But now as it stands, Ghana makes 1.7 billion American dollars every year from its minerals. And foreigners are those that take control of all these things all the time. And they give us something every year. How much do they give us every year? The same 300 million American dollars that a Japan seeks to get in the future from the highest bidder. Ah, how many people are following? How many people are understanding this? How many people are getting what I am saying? But they are selling it out and they don't care. In the year 2020, two years ago, Ghana made 7.2 billion American dollars from only three minerals. Gold, diamond, bauxite, and a bit of manganese. Only this three. How about the salt we have? How about the rest of the things like copper and the rest? My brother, my sister, as it stands right now, if a Japa is given out by this treacherous parliament, then that means no president in this country would ever be able to make any serious money from our gold mines. Think about it carefully and stop these criminal-minded people from selling the birthright of this country. Hey, my brother, my sister, I look at this and I cry. They are collateralizing every little thing that we have in this country. They have no mercy for the future generation. If a man can sell a whole mine and the future ones that will come in now so he can blow it before he dies, he is a wicked person. They have no respect for the next generation. My brother, my sister, this is the blackboard, a.k.a. Kukushunemo. When I return, we will talk more. What are we going to be talking about? More. Watch it. Boy, skip a job. This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kuku Shodemo. Yes, the Black Pot. And my name, Black Rasta. Remember, we don't talk politics. We talk what? Patriotism. When it's about patriotism, yes, you would find us. Politics, no way. We are in it. Hey! Now, the next thing I want to look at is what I have titled, Hallelujah. The joke at Commander. The joke at command in 1964. You know, I love history. In 1964, Kwame Nkrumah built the Commander Sugar Factory, and this sugar factory used to give us a lot of good sugar. The kind of sugar that this factory gave us was some beautiful brown sugar. The kind of sugar that we got from the Commander Sugar Factory was so beautiful and so nutritious. Nkrumah, the visionary, in the 1990s, greedy people collapsed the Commander Sugar Factory. Greed. Snakes and lizards and cockroaches made the Commander Sugar Factory their home. Those of us who are not that young or old enough to remember the Commander Sugar Factory gave us brown sugar. And when you put one, if I know the people used to call it dirty sugar, 
But today, the whole world is crying for brown sugar. You know the importance of brown sugar, right? It is healthier than the white sugar. True or false? Hey, Nkrumah was a visionary. He gave us the Commander Sugar Factory, 1964. Hey, two years later, 1966, they overthrew him. And his ghost started slapping them one after the other. 1990s. What happened next? Something interesting happened. Ah. The factory was closed down. And then when Mahama came into power, he is supposed to be an Nkrumahist because he belongs to a party that claims to be an Nkrumahist minded party. The NDC. He took a trip around the Commander Sugar Factory and he was greeted by snakes, scorpions, cockroaches, lizards, grasshoppers, hey, praying mantises, butterflies. Sometimes he even saw frogs and toads. And he said, no, the legacy of Nkrumah must not go down like this. He went all the way to India, hallelujah, and borrowed 35 million American dollars and splashed it on the Commander Sugar Factory. Ghanaians clapped, but it was too late. It was the year of elections and Ghanaians saw that, ah, this guy just wants to use this to lampoon us to win elections. We will not vote for him. They voted him out. And then the government that came after him, headed by Nana Kufuado, said it was a wasteful product. It was a white elephant. They were thinking even about selling the whole factory at less than a quarter the price that was used to build it and refurbish it. At the end of the day, my brother, my sister, Nana Akufuado said by April 2022, the factory would start producing sugar again. He promised because there was so much pressure on him. The youth of Commander had lost hope in this government because they were expecting to be employed. So what happened now? April came, April went away, and with their tails in between their legs, they had nothing to tell us. All of a sudden, when they realized that their promises had been failing one too many times, they said, okay, now Commander is going to bring raw sugar. Watch. Commander Sugar Factory to import raw sugar for processing. Why be by force? It be by force. They are going to import raw sugar. So that they pour it into their machines, shake the tin, and then they give it to you as sugar to eat. Hey, don't we have sugar cane farmers in Ghana? Interestingly, in Commander, there are so many sugar cane farmers who are ready to postpone the making of apetechi with their sugar cane and feed the factory so the factory will stand again and employ more people. But no, they want to go all the way to wherever, import raw sugar and feed the people. You see why Nkrumah was a visionary? How did the Commander Sugar Factory produce sugar? Has Commander ceased to be the Commander in the days of Kwame Nkrumah? How did Nkrumah manage to make sugar in that factory? The sugar that we enjoyed till the 1990s. And this government has to go all the way to bring raw sugar so you guys can get diabetes and die. My brother, my sister, hey, commander, you know what the chiefs must do? They must sit up and reject any raw sugar that is coming in. We don't need that. Encourage sugarcane plantations. You have them already. All you need to do is to put in extra energy. And everything is done. I lie? Now, my brother, my sister, unemployment over there. Terrible. But to God be the glory, as it stands right now, they say raw sugar. That raw sugar, is it by force? You know what is going to be next? 
they will close it down finally because they will say raw sugar is now so expensive it's coming from russia and because of the ukraine russia war hey it's so expensive for that matter everybody should go home and they will close the factory waiting for sugar cane to grow so that they will deal with the factory this would have been the biggest factory and the nana akufu adults one district one factory thing after all it was not really completed as in it never started producing sugar and you came into power you made sugar flow but because of the lack of vision jealousy and envy and lack of focus oh somebody did it so they will take credit when we do it, so we won't do it and commander is dying they don't think about the people they think about their political expediency and that is what is killing us brethren this is the blackboard aka kukushonomo where we speak truth to power and remember when i return i have many more things to talk about have you heard about uh, cheddar the rich man in ghana the self-made billionaire in ghana have you heard that he has tigers in his house wild tigers in his house why the tigers ha! We would also look at the Achimota forest. Are we going to take those tigers to the Achimota forest? But is the Achimota forest still existent? We shall find out when we return in the interim. This is the Black Forts. And my name, Black Rasta. We are live on Pan African TV, live on hey, Ghana Web TV, live on Loud Silence TV, loud on Black Empire mm -mm, TV. Follow us on social media. Yes. On YouTube, we are Black Empire Media, and our black is spelled B L A K K. Yes, and do business with us. More fire, fire, yeah, 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 yeah. Who 
will train you to fit in anywhere in the world. Um, we have our one month training and we also have uh, two weeks. It's between two weeks to one month, depending on the individual, whatever you want, we give it to you. At Chic Black to Beauty Home, we give you quality yet affordable. So come and get trained and be your own boss. Oh, Tinatet Tomac, I'm on my free. Tinatet Malake, AMA malaria fever, and a Tinatet Tomac Mesha, AMA will be a winner in dejection. Yes, you should move when you malaria and sign a waffle a dream. Not recommended for children below 12 years. Pregnant or lactating mothers should consult a doctor. is a Jamaican. Yes, I'm a Jamaican. I was born in a little parish, a beautiful little parish called Clarendon, outside of Kingston. Everybody knows Kingston, but Clarendon is where I come from. I am a singer. I am an author. I am a, um, a songwriter. I am a poetess and, I'm a, and I am an actress. Right? I do the whole, I've been doing it for many, many years. And so um, basically that's who I am. I am a, anything art, everything art. That's me. You think art and you think Diana. Yeah. <laughs> I do reggae music, I do inspirational music, I do cultural music, I do um, gospel, if you call it gospel. You know, I do. I just do uplifting, clean music, even the 12 year old can listen to it. Or, you know, or if the adult, if you feel like it needs some motivation or so. The kind of music I do will really, you know, motivate you and that's basically what I do with reggae predominantly. <laughs> Okay, so the inspiration behind Bed of Roses is this. I actually, you know, bad to bad, as we say in Jamaica, there's that little stigma that has always been going on that, you know, you know, men are, most men are not good men, and you don't really have good men, especially like if they're poor and they can't take care of you. Women have two hands and two feet too, so you know, cripple, you know, you don't necessarily need somebody to take care of you. What you need is a man with a good heart, who loves you and who will work to you, so, with you so you can build an empire. So, Bed of Roses is really in the defense of men and so also to really rewrite the narrative that if a man is poor, he can't take care and that he's not good. It's not good for you, which is a lie. You understand? So there are lots of men out there who don't have a lot of money, but they, you know, they are good and upright men. You know, they, they just want someone to work with them and someone to motivate them. And so that song was really, um, you know, to celebrate good men who don't necessarily have a lot of money. Nice little ranch, don't go if I bet you where we plant, me now go hungry. Come and say, don't you hear me, we now we plant Give me a firm foundation when the sun But of course, this is available to the public um, on our platform called 16 Bars Multimedia. So on the website, it will be that 16BARSM has in Mary, M has in Mary.com. So that is 16BARSMM.com. Definitely. I'm available for live performances any day of the week. So you can contact me. On, first of all, you can reach out to me on my Instagram as Empress Diana, and my Diana has two N's, so that's Empress, which is D I A N N A, so that's Empress Diana, that's my IG, 
and um, also you can also you know send me a, a, a link or something on our YouTube our YouTube is the same name of our website 16 bars multimedia we have lots of um, work there uh, you can reach us there and also you can um, you can reach us at 16 bars mm at outlook.com so that is 16 this time it's the word spe all spelled out 16 bars mm at outlook.com and if you choose when you go on our website which is the same 16 bars mm.com um, you can go to the contact page and send us um, a, a message you understand? and usually we respond within a couple of hours all right um, so that's basically it. and I'm sure at the end of um, this you you will have a number somewhere to contact us all right so that's that's it that's what I do and you know keep the music locked <laughs> Yes, I bless. Nice to go ranch, don't go hoochie. Well, if I where we plant, me now go hungry. Come and say, don't you hear me in a way pantry? Give me a firm foundation. Me not send it. Boah! Skip a dodge. Black pot. Coco show, man. Yes, I bless. Oh my God. Beautiful Diana Wright, all the way from Jamaica. She's from Clarendon. And she calls that uh, bed of roses. Now, Diana says, hey, it doesn't matter how poor the man is. He just must have love. And once the man has love, he has everything. No problem at all. So hear me now. If you have a man who loves you and he has nothing in terms of material things, would you still go with him? Or you push him out? Diana says it's a bed of roses. Oh my God. Make him a bed of roses. Yes, contact her. Her phone numbers are there. Her contact lines are all there. And book her for live performances. Beautiful Diana Wright. Oh my God. It's Jamaican. Mm -mm. Thanks for supporting our show. And of course, remember we are also sponsored by the kind courtesy of Chick Luxury Beauty Home. Hey, natural twist and locks. They do waxing, they do lashing, they also do pen cutting, they do wigs and also braids. They have a special pergola where you will sit there and get some fresh air whilst they give you your golden locks. Hey, they also do massage. And at Chick Luxury Beauty Home, what they do is, they don't just ask anybody to massage you. They make sure that they bring in somebody that you would choose. What do I mean? They have their bevy of beauties and the handsome men. So you choose from that. Which one do you want to have a massage from to take you to heaven? Hey, we are so professional at Chick Luxury Beauty Home. And we also train you in everything that we do. On your screen, as you can see. One man training, two man training. Hey, rush and come do that. Take their phone numbers on the screen and call them. Hey, you get a discount. When you say it's Black Rasta who said call. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, they are located right there inside of their software chair, a Kwabwa loop. Right there inside a Jingano Road. Oh my God, have mercy. Chick Luxury Beauty Home. They are sleek and chic. And with chic, there's no ugly lady. Every lady has her beauty glowing. They have the secret. We are also sponsored by the Kind Courtesy of Tinnated Natural Health Center, the House of Quality Herbal Medicines. Now go get the Tinnated Malacare. Hey, it kills malaria in just one day. They also have the Tinnated Hyan capsules for your eyes. If you have bad eyes, this is a natural way to clear your bad eyes and keep your eyes good hey they also have the tinnated venicare this will wash your heavens and keep your heavens very tight hey of course malaria typhoid fever join this oh no problem pick up their numbers on the screen call them for bulk purchases and inquiries and remember you can also walk into any tinnated shop and pick up the product that suits your condition or walk into any good herbal shop across the country ghana and pick up the tinnated product of your choice. Remember, we are endorsed by the FDA, Food and Drugs Authority, right here in Ghana. We are authentic. Thanks so much for supporting us. Yes, we are also sponsored by the can courtesy of hot and spicy catfish. A catfish is a cat and a fish at the same time. Hey, sometimes you eat what you don't know. Whether the fish was sick, whether the fish was suffering from coronavirus, or pneumonia or kwashoko you don't know so at uh, hot and spicy grilled catfish located right there along the spintex road near the american washing bay and Texpo. we make sure that 
you know what you are eating before we prepare that for you. So when you come, there is something we call the point and kill. Ah, you see in our big aquarium, Lord God have mercy, our catfish of different sizes. Oh my God. Now you point the one that you want to have for dinner. We pick it up. We put it on the scale, weigh it, and grill it the way you want it. You want it the Arabian way, Indian way, Chinese way, Ghanaian way, or the Nigerian way. Hey, we will suggest to you other creative ways to grill your catfish for you. When you go, you will return with your family. Hey, hot and spicy grilled catfish is here. Pick up the numbers on the screen and make your orders. La, 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 la. But most importantly... Talk about us to others your experience of hot and spicy grilled catfish. Thank you so much. We appreciate your support. This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushunomo, where we speak truth to power. Hey, let's look at cheddar. How many of you know cheddar? Ghana's rich man. Now, he was into scraps business. He went into some other things, and now he's a real estate man. That's him. Recently, he was coming in with some Bitcoin. He called it the Freedom Coin. And the whole country went haywire. And he went back. This is a drama kid. He knows what to touch so that there will be drama. Young and powerful. Hey, he is reported to be so rich. You know why? Now, number one Oxford Street belongs to him. Hey, now you see him sitting here with some miniature lions around him. He wanted to put this into action. So he went and bought two tigers. Hey! <coughs> From Jata to uh, 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 Tiger. How do they call Tiger in Osibo? Oh, From Jata to Sebo. Hey, Papa, it's more day. My God have mercy. From Lion, he went for Osibo. In other words, Tiger. Ah, tiger, is it Osibo? Or is it Leopard, which is Osibo? Whatever it is, there is an animal which is in the cat family. And that one is the tiger. And when he brought it in the night, neighbors around his house, hey, what's happening? Some people decided to peep into his house and they saw these two tigers. I don't know if they are two lovebirds running around, gobbling almost anything they could find. My God, quickly, they reported cheddar fast to the government. This guy is harboring some wild tigers in his house. And watch it. Residents express fear over presence of two tigers in Freedom Jacob Caesar's Wonder World Estates. Jesus have mercy. But what is Cheddar himself saying? Early this morning, I called him and he told me, Black Rasta, my tigers are not a danger to the public. Oh. Me, my tigers, they are my pets. Some people have lions as their pets. Eh? Some people's husbands are even lions. Eh? Some people's wives are even lions. I've decided to pet a tiger. What is the problem? But on a more serious note, my tigers are supposed to boost tourism. <laughs> the drama kid said that his tigers are supposed to boost tourism in Ghana. So he brought it so that tourists would come and look at his tigers. He said, look, Black Rasta, my tigers are not ordinary tigers. Who? They are not tigers you would see in any zoo. My tigers are special tigers. Have you seen the pictures? I said, yes. Do they look ordinary? I said, how can they look ordinary? My brother, my sister. But the residents are complaining. That Jacob Caesar, a.k.a. Nana Bediakun, Nana Kwame Bediakun, is disturbing them with the lions. And interestingly, two residents said something. And I, I laughed the whole night. You know what they said? They said the lions, are, the tigers are smelling too bad. They can't sleep. Hey, Ghanaians, they can say things to free themselves. So the lions, are tigers are smelling the whole area. You wake up and smell all over. They are smelling. Can, 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 can. Hey, these two little tigers are smelling and the whole area can smell them. Anyway, after saying that, the wildlife people went straight into Cheddar's house and then they arrested the two tigers 
and took them away. Oh, Jesus. So the tigers have been relocated. They've been taken to the zoo. Jesus. But my brother, may I say something? Why do we need a zoo at all? Are we that wicked to keep animals in a zoo? These are some of the things I say and people say I'm controversial. But years to come, they will be sensible to understand that just as they are fighting for human rights, animals also have their rights. Why on earth would you keep an animal in a prison? The zoo is the animal's prison. Human beings go to prison because they have misbehaved and I am not even in support of prisons. I've told you time and again that if I were president, all prisons in Ghana would be closed. We will turn them into five-star hotels, at least three-star hotels, so that people who are supposed to be prisoners will go in there. We will rather rehabilitate them and make sure that we teach them a certain good trade so that they don't become a burden when they finish doing time. My brother, you capture animals from the wild. They are natural habitats. You don't care whether they have husbands or wives. You do not care whether they have children and suckling babies or not because you are wicked. You carry them all the way from the wild and then you lock them up in prisons that you call zoos just because you want to come and look at them and feel good. That is sadism. You are wicked. Any country that has zoos is a wicked country. Free the animals. Let them go into their environments and their natural habitats. They don't disturb you. Does the tiger come to your house to beg for food? Has a lion ever come to your mother asking to suck your mother's breast milk? Why then do you want to imprison the lion? Right now, rich men and women in Africa, what they do is they get a lion, they get a tiger, they get a chimpanzee, they get that from the wild, and that is supposed to show that they are rich. It's foolishness and wickedness. My brother, my sister, come along with me and let's think together. Do you think that we should encourage zoos? I remember when I was a little boy, schooling at Tia Amade Secondary School, Kumasi. The Ray Takbir. Allah Akbar. At this juncture, I want to say good afternoon to my big brother, who is the headmaster of Tia Madai Secondary School, Al Haj Yaqub A B Abu Bakar. Salaamu Alaikum. I'm going to be at Tia Madai Secondary School on Wednesday. Yes, I will be there coming Wednesday, and I'm going to be at the SRC week. I'll be talking to the students. I just want to say good afternoon to you, blessed love. When I was at Tia Madai Secondary School. We used to go to the Kumasi Zoo. KJT are there. Opposite that school. I think it's St. Louis School or something. There used to be very pretty ladies in there. My brother, we would go into the zoo. Snakes in there. Lions. Monkeys. We'll be looking at them and we'll be feeling good. But there was a monkey I saw in there. When it saw me, it looked at me as if to say, Oh, so it's because of you people I'm here. Eh? So it's because of you people they have imprisoned me. Because you people want to come and look at us. Do you know what my children are doing in the bush? I'm a mother. They've taken me away from my children. By now they've been eaten by the lion. If I was there, I would have protected them. Tears ran down my eyes. From that day, I refused to go to any zoo. What are your wild reserves there for? That's the best you can do for the animals. Go to the wildlife reserve if you want to see wild animals. But greedy, wicked human beings will imprison animals. Hey, let me tell you something. You know Abronuma? What you call Abronuma? Eh? The dove. The dove. Abronuma. Jesus. Hey! They are normally walking in twos. That's husband and wife. Oh. Hey, if one of them dies before the other, he will never find any partner again. It will live like that till death. 
you go out, you are looking for catapult, pa, you kill it. The other one will remain a spinster, a bachelor forever. You will cry because you don't see the tears of Abraham Numa. You do not know what Abraham Numa is going through in your hands. Same way, if you had the heart to sit and watch wildlife, how some animals can go to the same spot where a lion ate their baby for several years and keep brooding and crying. You will never even eat animals again. Why should you eat animals? Why? For what? Can't you eat herbs? Can't you eat fruits? But greed, greed, love for taste. You will catch an animal you don't care whether it's pregnant or not. You will slaughter it and cut open the stomach. Babies are in there. You catch fish. They have eggs in their stomachs and whatever. You don't care. You fry them and eat them. Because you are the king of kings of all animals. Let the animals live. Leave them alone. The same way you are suckling your baby and love your baby. That's the same way the animals love their babies. So cheddar. You and your zoo. Clear away the zoo. Send back those tigers into the wild. All the people selling echo, echo on the streets of Accra. The other day I spoke with KSM. I went to his house and I saw bears put in a cage. So many colorful bears. I told the KSM, wow, these are colorful bears. But their chirping is telling me something. He said, what is it? What are they telling you? I said, they are saying that, please, free us. We've done nothing wrong to be imprisoned by you. We laughed. But KSM had and opened all the bears. He opened all the bears. They went out. Thank you, KSM. God bless you. And when the bears went away, look at what happened. Because of how he took care of them, some of them were still returning to the house and eating food. And going back and eating food and going back. And then he told me, Oh, Black Rasta, you know, some of them still come to my house, you know, they come and eat. I wanted to tell him something, but I couldn't master enough courage to speak to him. I didn't want to push the thing too much. You know what I was going to say? Say, those that are coming back are those whose wives and husbands and children died whilst they were imprisoned here. They died out of sorrow. So now they have no friends, they have no husbands. So when they go there, they have to return and look at where they were imprisoned before they lost their livelihoods. Jesus have mercy. To God be the glory. Hey, this is the black pot. A.K.A. Kukushunomo. I want to leave Cheddar's zoo and look at the last thing. This one, I have decided to title the Achimota Joke. Hey, Achimota Joke. Ah, you know Achimota Forest, right? Achimota Forest. Jesus. On the 16th of December, 1921, Achimota School was given a piece of land to build a school on by the old family. Hey, beautiful building. That's, that's, that's them. Beautiful people. Hey, oh, you are done. Oh, you are done. Lenche, lenche. Oh, Jesus. These people did well. They gave it out. But government compensated them. They took the money, pocketed it, and blew it. Hey! They took the money. Then government came back again like Oliver Twist, asking for more. Ah! And on the 17th of May, 1927, they asked for another expansive piece of land. Jesus! Remember I said expansive, not expensive expansive piece of land and that was 479 hectares what were they going to use it for firewood oh. they call it fuel wood firewood for achimata school to cook and eat hallelujah hey this was 1927 nkrumah was still a little boy running around you know what happened so achimata school was enjoying so that 479 hectare land was supposed to be used for firewood. Long story cut short, Achimota school doesn't use the firewood anymore. So, 
Oh, family came and said, oh, people are encroaching. We want our land back. And by the loss of the country, they quickly gave the land, some portions of the land back to the Owu family. My brother, my brother, my brother, my brother, my brother. I think it's about time we sat back to look at something Ablakwa is talking about. Ablakwa is saying that. That's Ablakwa. Look at his head. It is shining like the head of Obroni. I love this guy. He said, Achimata Forest. Let's ban the return of state lands to original owners. Yes. Once the nation has acquired it, forget about it. Whatever happens to it is in the hands of the nation. But the Owu family says, we were not paid any compensation. No. There's no record. Whether we're paid or not, there's no record. We want the land back. And my investigation showed that the land that belongs to the Owu family returned to the Owu family. Portions of the land have been bought by the same people who returned the land to the Owu family. The dirty politicians. Do you get it? Hey! Politicians would seize cars from cocaine barons. Seize marijuana and cocaine. And after they have embarrassed the marijuana smugglers and cocaine traffickers, you know what they do? They sit down and share the marijuana and cocaine. They say they are auctioning cars. They auction the cars to themselves and they drive around. These guys are wicked. Look at it! BBC. Pigeon. This is BBC Pigeon. It's Achibota Forest Saga. Ghanaians worried government and party officials go take over release Achimota lands. CSOs to government. This, this is BBC Pigeon. Ghanaians. Jesus have mercy. And it's true. Hey! When the government takes your land, compensates you, forget the land. Whether the government is growing fuel wood, firewood, or monkeys and grasshoppers in there, leave it to the government. Let the citizens remind the government about the original purpose for which the land was taken. And the government must have the right to also turn it into another use. Now, Achimota Forest, ah, yes, they say they are still going to keep it. They say they are still going to make sure that it works. We wish them all the best. Oh, family. Oh, you are done. Watch. Achimata Forest not being sold. Part of reserve being returned to owners. So part of the reserve is still what? Is it still part of the forest reserve? People are already building in there. Where we used to go and blow tongues. Where we used to go and just, you know, enjoy the serenity of nature. Today you are turning it into a concrete jungle. To God be the glory. My name is Black Rasta. And I want to say thank you so much for coming along. I appreciate you. I love you. Hey, remember we are live on Pan-African TV. Live on Loud Silence TV. Live on Ghana Web TV. Live on our own TV. Black Empire TV. We are also on social media. Follow us on YouTube. And on YouTube we are Black Empire Media. And the black is spelled B-L-A-K-K. -K. Yes, B-L-A-K-K. -K. Uh, remember to follow us and also subscribe and click on our notification button. Most importantly, do business with us. You can see our phone numbers on the line, mm -mm, on your screens. Do business with us. We are all over Africa and beyond via satellite TV, via manual TV, and via social media. Pick up the numbers. Do business with us. When you put your business here, Cameroon would hear it. Hey, Japan would hear it. Hey, Burkina Faso would see it. And Gambia would see it. All over Africa and beyond. We are the masters. Everybody is watching us. Everybody is seeing us. Until such time, when I never woke up again, jobless, no less, no stress, Black Rasta say, on behalf of the team, more fire! Fire! Yeah, 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 yeah